I thought initially that I would argument the debate outgoing on the subject matter so that those who read the answer do not have their heads spin over uh, how matters have been cascaded on the answer. But allow me to be brief because uh, a, a lot of what I had captured has um, actually found itself on the floor of Parliament by virtue of the Minister's submission and your recognition of the issues you saw observed. So I will be very brief. Secondly, it's uh, an interim observatory statement following the agency with which these matters captured the attention of the House and therefore uh, did not go into deeper investigations of what is and what is not at the facility. Right on the speaker on Friday the 12th of April 2024, the House's attention was drawn to concerns that the Confederation of African Football CAF had in an interim inspection report made a declaration to the effect that the Ugandan major national stadium at Nambole was not ready to host international matches given the inordinate delay in the completion of the ongoing renovation civil works on the complex. Let me speak and colleagues. Uh, Let me speak and directed the Minister of Sports and Finance to meet with the agency to resolve the impasse and with directives to the Commission of Parliament to attend a stakeholders meeting at Nambole and report to the House. But Honourable Speaker and colleagues, the CAF report on the stadium that was laid on the floor by the Honourable Nambeshe had the net effect of cancellation of Uganda's opportunity of hosting major international football matches, including Chan and the CAF qualifiers in June 2024, and derailing our assessment for eligibility to host AFCON in 2027. The National Stadium was officially opened in 1997, right on the speaker, albeit at 75% completion. Until the ongoing renovations were commenced in March 2022 by the Ministry of Defense through a memorandum with the Ministry of Education and Sports, the stadium was never fully completed to full operation phase. Right on the speaker, assessment and costing of the innovation works. In the interim visit I made for two days, after assessment of the desired civil works for upgrade of the stadium to international standards by the Ministry of Works and Transport, together with the UPD of Inginani Brigade, the innovation works were phased in three stages. The short term, which is the ongoing, costing 94 billion, 49 million, 239,595. Phase two, which is the medium term intervention, to cost 84 billion, 999,000 million, 796 million, 761,000. 256. Then the long term, which is phase three, costing 108 billion, 541 million, 395,375. Costing a whopping 287 billion, 587 million, 396,226 to innovate the stadium to its entirety, Right Honourable Speaker and colleagues, to international standards. Right Honourable Speaker, government has so far been able to provide all the required finances for phase one at this stage, albeit with some delays, which is largely the response for the current crisis that necessitated the direct intervention of parliament. Right Honourable Speaker, response to major calf concerns in general terms, right on the speaker and colleagues, all the issues raised by CAF were valid and the basic requirements for certifying a particular sports facility to host international events. 
During the two days' acquaintance with the, with the stadium and its facilities and the ongoing innovation works, I can confirm right on the speaker and attest to the fact that the remaining renovation works can be completed in a period of between two to three weeks. Save for the delivery and installation of the imported floodlights that require the next 30 days, way beyond the prescribed time. But even for the floodlights, right on the speaker and colleagues, management and the contractor assured us that they have in place a temporary arrangement to install leased, leased floodlights that will supply the required 2,000 lakhs until uh, that, that, that will serve the purpose um, for the interim period as required by CAF. I wish to report to Parliament that the rest of the requirements on the CAF checklist, for some reason, we are not inspected including the smart stadium facilities that enable automated ticketing and seating. Many fittings are available in the stores of the stadium, and I was able to inspect them. We have advised the contractor in the meeting, the speaker, to utilize the appeal window, which the minister mentioned, to install them in order to make the stadium ready for reinspection, if that is an arrangement feasible and available. Let me speak and colleagues, I was shocked to inspect stores with uh, materials gathering dust and the calf was demanding for the existence. Probably between the contract and the supervisor, somebody slept on duty and they put up in this mess and crisis. Let me speak. Let me speak uh, recommendations and way forward. Let me speak uh, in the interim, the Minister for Sports must ensure that supervision of the contractor is enhanced especially to ensure delivery of the outputs on the agreed timelines. In the meeting, Honorable Speaker, we agreed to a work of flame with very strict timelines of delivery and installation of what is available and being demanded. And somehow, probably it speaks to what the former president said, that um, if they were involved, some of these should be already in place because they are in stores and they're not probably considered as immediate and appropriately required. Two, the minister should report to parliament on a weekly basis on the progress made until the requirements are fulfilled and the right to host international matches is restored and confirmed by CAF. So even when they do not confirm, the minister should report so that we can find what is appropriate for him and his team. Three, there is need for an interim audit, right on the speaker, of the fund is so far released for the renovations for phase one. The audit should not be limited to deployment of the funds, but the entire procurement arrangement, quality of work, and value for money before starting the second phase. Let me speaker, because this is an interim report, allow me to make this one last statement which had not included my interim statement relating to the parking space that is on record of parliament. We were able to have a meeting with the owners of Pioneer Bus that own a scrapyard at the facility parking space. Of course, it's one of the impediments for approval of the stadium for eligibility to host matches. The key director there, Mr. Albert Muganga, was part of the meeting together with the Uganda Land Commission that offered the company a lease, which as a lawyer I considered uh, um, out of uh, legal space. The Office of the Attorney General was uh, represented. And um, the pioneer people have no problem with removing their scrap. Even by yesterday, they, report, they reported that they are looking for space. We gave them this week to remove their scrap from Nambole, such that um, compliance, at least for the parking facility, is restored. Right on the speaker, I hope when the matter of uh, Pioneer comes to Parliament, Parliament will be very strict in investigating circumstances under which Pioneer bus owners ended up at Nambole, acquiring a lease of 49 years as the Nambole land, and now they are in court 
requiring compensation of over 25 billion for business loss. Madam Speaker, I hope Parliament will interest itself in how all this happened, such that um, um, we are able to save the taxpayer from this negatory possible expense. Right now, Speaker and colleagues, this crisis in finality should have a permanent lesson to all charged with management of public affairs to appreciate and understand the gravity of their actions and how they impact on public confidence, right on Speaker, in leadership in this country. I thank you. Um, I beg to submit.